Hey everybody, this is Matt of Cigar Hound Dog with another cigar review. And today I'll be smoking the CAO Flathead B23 and MK1. This here is a 6x60 ring gauge Gordo. That was a lot of numbers and letters right there in the title, which makes sense because we have a lot of cigar right here. There's a wrapper up close, rich brown in color, faintest amount of oil sheen, well packed, better look at the box press too. There's the band, there's a the reverse, there's the front, love the color scheme. And there's a cap. It's uh, pretty flat. <laughs> but yeah, as far as a blend goes, get my cheat sheet here. This one has a Honduran Hamastran wrapper. That wrapper over Nicaraguan Habano binder, over Brazilian Matafina, Honduran Hamastran Viso, Nicaraguan Jalapa Viso, and Nicaraguan Esteli Lajero filler. A lot going on. Get fit a lot of tobacco in this freaking ring gauge. Yeah, as far as my previous experience with CAO, specifically this flathead line, the V660 carb, that's the 660 in the original line, in the original blend. Good cigar. I don't like 660s whatsoever for the most part, but for a 660, I really enjoyed that one. It's actually my favorite size in the line. So yeah, because of my previous experience with the V660 carb, I'm looking forward to this V23 here. Let's get it cut up, lit up, and see what we have. And I don't have a punch cut, which is perfect for this cigar. So I'm just gonna try to do a straight cut here. See how well I can do this. See if I can just shave a little bit off. Okay, eh, not too shabby. Wide open draw. There's a cut I was able to obtain there. Alrighty, slide it up. Could take me a while to light this one. The biggest issue I have with this size is the mouthfeel. It just feels uncomfortable smoking it. Don't know why, just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right, but it tastes right at least. Leather and brown sugar are the two main tones right now, both to the retro and palate. A hint of cinnamon spice as well to the retro oil. Very good cigar here. Through the retro and palate, getting a fair amount of chestnut as well. Dig that. And a little bit of musty oak through the retro and palate too. Digging this cigar to start. Right now, I'll say a solid medium body, long finish, and a smooth smoke texture. Let's see what happens in the first third. So I'll smoke it down through the end of the first third here. Let you know how it goes. Hey, we have reached the end of the first third. Ash it right before this take. And for a 660, that burn line ain't too shabby. And still, a lot of smoke. All right, so at this point, medium plus body, long finish, and a slightly syrupy smoke texture, leather, and brown sugar. Those are still the two main flavors, both through the retro and palate, getting a touch more of the chestnut too through the retro and palate. Dig all that. Same amount of the cinnamon spice through the retro hill. Musty oak and now medium roast coffee as undertones both of the retro and palate. And that's it for now. So far, this is a very enjoyable 660. So I'll smoke it down through the end of the second third. Probably up to the band there. Let you know how it goes. Hey, we have reached the end of the second third. Wavy burn line per usual for a 660, from my experience anyways. Flaky ash, but still, a lot of smoke. A 
All right, so at this point, medium to full body, long finish, and a syrupy smoke texture, leather, and brown sugar. Those are the two main flavors still through the Retro Palette. Right underneath that, I'm getting that chestnut note. Still dig that addition through the Retro Palette. Cinnamon spice, slightly stinging my sinus to the retro hail now. Musty oak and now dry earth is faint undertones both to the retro and palate. The faintest amount of medium roast coffee only to the retro hail. Not a bad cigar, hasn't changed much in flavor, but it is amplifying in flavor, which I don't mind. So I'll go ahead and smoke it down through the end of the final third here. Maybe I'll have to correct that burn line too. I'll get you the final verdict. Hey, we have reached the end of the final third here. Wavy burn line, and I did touch it up in the previous third. Flaky ash, but still, a lot of smoke. So yeah, at this point, full body, long finish, and an aired smoke texture leather and charred wood those are the two main tones of the palette through the retro hill this spice is ramped up cinnamon spice a scorching amount of that through the retro hill with the leather and charred wood right underneath that through the retro the chestnut is completely gone just getting a touch of the brown sugar sweetness both of the retro and palette So yeah, overall, I'm gonna rate the cigar a pleasant. The first and second third were very enjoyable. I rated those thirds as satisfying. Just took such a big fat Gordo dip here in the final third. This one gets a pleasant score. Give me the V660 carb in the original blend any day over this cigar. This is not a bad cigar and I would smoke it again, if I were on an island and this was the only cigar I could smoke. And one last thing, do not forget to follow me on Rumble and Odyssey with the way YouTube has been restricting and censoring cigar content lately. It is paramount that you know I am on other platforms like Rumble and Odyssey, just in case if YouTube pulls a plug in us here, if you watch this on YouTube. So yeah, everybody, this has been my review of the CAO Flathead V23 and MK1. Lots of letters and numbers there. But thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing, and I'll see you for the next view.